Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. It's kind of a big day for us, isn't it? This is the day that for sure we are ending our study in Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. And uh, gosh, I, I, I kind of feel funny about it. I've really enjoyed having something specific to study every day. I've also enjoyed all your comments. So many of you have told me that this was meaningful in your life, and that's very rewarding. So thank you for that. I always appreciate feedback. For whatever reason, and I, if I ever get to talk to Rick on this topic, boy, I'd like to ask him, why did you leave this chapter on people-pleasing as your closing last chapter. I will say that the end of this chapter kind of is a summation of much of this Purpose Driven Life book, and maybe that's why he did it. But let's dig in and see what we can find for us today. The Trap of People Pleasing. Proverbs 29 25, right at the top of the page, says, It is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you, but if you trust the Lord, you'll be safe. And that's kind of the key on the whole thing that we're to trust in God. I'm not trying to be a people pleaser. No, I am trying to please God. If I were still trying to please people, I would not be Christ's servant. Paul wrote that. In that next verse, Galatians chapter 1, at verse 10. You know, we long to be approved and liked by people. We want to fit. We want, we want others. We want to get along. And so there's nothing wrong with that. God wired us for relationships. But the key one, of course, and the one that will last forever is with him. And so that's, got, according to these scriptures, that's exactly where uh, our attention needs to be. Now, I'm going to jump ahead to the, the por portion where it says how to break free from the people pleaser trap. And I really like Rick Warren's answers to that question. And like I said just a moment ago, I think it kind of sums up a lot of what we, what we have to say. How do we break out of the people? Please, it's, it, it, it changes a, a mindset. A mindset has to change. And, and sure enough, Rick quotes Romans 12, verse 2, right there at the, in that first paragraph. He says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. Be changed. Let your mind be renewed. And that's what it will take. It changes our focus from what others think of me to what my Heavenly Father thinks of me. And that's the only thing, well, it's not the only, in one sense, it's the only thing that matters. But in another sense, we're supposed to be a good witness to those around us, too. So we ought to have good rapport. In fact, it's one of the, a good reputation is one of the qualifications for an elder. So, now, here's some facts, though. Number one, remember that even God can't please everyone. And that's so obvious, isn't it? On both sides of a game. Both sides are praying for victory. So is it who prays the hardest? No, no. Uh, he mentions farmers. Farmers might be praying for rain, but on the same day, kids might be praying for sunshine so they can go swimming. Which one does God answer? No, you can't. Please, everyone. God can't do it, so we can't either. I mean, my classic one, which happens fairly often, 
is at church, someone will come to me and say, it's too cold in here. And meanwhile, I look around and I see people putting on their sweaters and vice versa happens. Or the music's too loud. Or I can't hear in the back. You can't please that. We try to. We try to, though. Number two, remember that I don't need anybody's approval to be happy. Happiness is not based on other people's opinions of you and I. We live on a broken planet with broken people and people will always be critical of, of us and others. So focus on the Lord. Remember, number three, remember what seems so important right now is only temporary. I would challenge you to tell me what was so important two weeks ago. But two weeks ago, you were very concerned about that. I'm sure, whatever it is or what. That's just how we are. The moment, right now, this moment, I'm concerned about something that is scheduled for this afternoon. And it seems so important to me. And yet it doesn't seem to be coming together. And, and it does deal with another person with whom I work. And I actually do care what he thinks. And yet, I know for sure that in a while... And not a very long while, neither he nor I <laughs> will remember what we had going this afternoon. No, the fact is, it's temporary. It's not necessarily not important, but it's temporary. And so to put it into the perspective of life, because this life is temporary, isn't it? Wow. Now, we don't have to please others. Number four, I think it is, remember that I only have to pre please one person, and that's the Lord. It's If it pleases God what you're thinking of doing, that's what you ought to do. If you're doing it just because other people's expectations have you, you better think long and hard about it. Wow. Number four. Five, the, remember, one day I will give an account of my life to God. And that's the verse he quotes. Each of you will give a personal account to God. We don't account to anyone else. And so that is the one. We was long to hear, don't we? We want to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. How do we get to hear that? By doing what he asks us to do, by loving him daily, by getting to know him, by doing all the five things, worshiping him, fellowshipping with his family, learning and growing called discipleship, and then serving, serving God through serving others, having a, having a ministry. That's important too. Every one of these. And then telling others about him. Evangelism. Sharing the good news. When we do all five of those things, which you and I have talked about and studied for the last eight weeks, when we give it our best and we long to be with him, then I firmly believe you will hear those great words, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm so glad that you and I are going through this life together. Thank you for being on this journey, the Purpose Driven Life journey with me. And we're going to end this week with some amazing worship. I hope you'll be with me tomorrow. God bless. Thank you for being a part of my life these eight weeks. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him